What is Fright Day, by the way? We are a blog and podcast. It's Got a it. labor of love. We don't make any money off of it. No, yeah. not yet. That's kind of like me in any kind of film. <laughs> I thought you guys were all super wealthy. <laughs> I heard that somewhere. Yeah, and just yeah. fell into it because it was easy. Right, yeah, I know, I know. It's a real walk in the park. Um, <laughs> well, first, we had the opportunity to see um, the invitation last night. Oh, cool. And loved it. Oh, great. Um, great. Yeah. Thanks. That's the, the rating that was done. Um, Thanks. It's <laughs> nice. Not everyone's cup of tea, so I appreciate that. No, it was, uh, yeah, well, it, it certainly worked for us. Hmm. So... I guess the first question I kind of had about it when we, we were watching the movie, and yep. the, the press people were very clear about, you know, capsule reviews, um, careful of the end. Right, right, right. So how do you wish, we're, absolutely, no problem, yep. but how do you balance, um, especially a movie that it sounds like um, will be distributed yes. sometime in the next year, yes. how do you balance the need to promote mm-hmm. with the need to keep what happens um, in that movie a shock to I know a secret it's a really interesting question I mean I, I don't know exactly what the answer is to that yet I think we're kind of feeling our way with Draft House and I know Draft House was something we really loved about them right away was the only way you can promote this movie is to not give away the plot so I was like, okay, that's, I agree with you, but how are we going to do that? And so they brought up a really interesting, you know, they brought up like the Psycho campaign. They went way back and they were just like, you know, with Psycho, it, it, part of the campaign was don't tell anyone what happens in this movie. Just tell them they have to see it. And so I'm curious to see if that's going to like have any, um, how that's going to work <laughs> but I, I see the value of it because it's a rare thing these days to go into a movie and know the premise but not know how it plays out and that's kind of what our job is going to have to be I think we're going to have to do it that way that's unenviable <laughs> I know I know particularly with like trailers and the way movies are positioned in you know like for want of the better word the marketplace you kind of know everything going in and that's sort of the point of the experience but the point of this experience is that you think you might know something going in but that gets kind of upended and then upended again and you know so it, it's it's going to be a really it's going to be a challenge i'm really excited to see how we make it work or don't um, I, it would be heartbreaking for me if audiences didn't need to experience it like we did uh, yes for the first time with new eyes thank you you know because that's an interesting issue with the movie is like you know for people who read the script and who knew its machinations you know this is like the friends of the court who would look at the movie and give me notes and feedback um, it was interesting because I think there became because they knew where it was going there were these assumptions that the audience would understand that too. Like, oh, well, we see that. And it's like, I don't know. Like, all the people who haven't seen the script and don't know anything about it, they're just completely blindsided. And so it's an interesting um, kind of litmus test to see that if you don't know the story entirely going in, you, there's a lot of room for surprise in this particular movie. And, and beyond surprise, uh, immersion. Uh, you, yeah. You feel like you're at the dinner table. Uh huh. Like, who's gonna be? What's coming <laughs> in next? I'm so happy that it reads that way because I always wanted it to be a really tense, kind of paranoid drama for the first hour and ten minutes. And um, if it works that way, then I think you stay a little bit hooked, you know, or a lot hooked. And if it doesn't work that way, it's not going to be your cup of tea. So it it reminded me a lot in the best possible way of a stage play. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, you could see the rooms. I could almost visualize the rooms rolling off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between scenes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, we had always talked about sort of the best um, experiences I've had, like watching live theater, are the moments where I'm sort of not sitting in the audience anymore. I'm sort of the stage and the audience are kind of one. And, you know, of course it's on a stage and that's a different thing. You're watching from a single vantage point. And so for me, the interesting challenge was take advantage of the immediacy of the theater experience and make this feel like a real night that's actually unfolding, but make it cinematic enough that people feel the pleasure of sitting and watching a movie, you know? 
which is a tough balance. And yes. I, I think a huge part of it uh, were your actors. Yes. Yes. The actors uh, in this piece were really top notch. We got a great group of people together and a lot of unfamiliar faces and a lot of people who um, weirdly we would cast somebody and then they would know four other people in the cast or had just worked with, you know, like, so it was kind of like when we got everyone together, everyone was like, Hey, it's so good to see you. And we were just like, how do you all know each other? You know, like, and it became a little bit of a meta reflection of the movie um, because there were some people who had never like, John Carroll Lynch had worked with Tammy Blanchard and knew um, knew her very well, so they were already that. So that was uh, uh, Pruitt and Eden, respectively. Whereas Logan had never met John Carroll Lynch, and you know he was like, "Wow, you're so tall," you know. And so there was those dynamics of um, you're kind of a stranger to me, and should I be afraid, and you know that kind of stuff in, in among the actors right away. It was awesome. Um, so. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even try to classify this movie as thriller or drama, both because I don't right. know that I could, and I don't know it would be a disservice to people who will see it in the future. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I hope. The uh, yes, absolutely, <laughs> comfort. Uh, I guess what experience uh, did your cast and crew bring uh, from other ex- other experiences in the the horror genre to the movie? Oh, that's interesting. You mean like had they been in other horror films like or Lynch? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, John Lynch is great because he does. He he just there's something about him. He's the most affable, wonderful, gentle guy. But he keeps he just keeps getting kind of cast as the heavy. And um, the nice thing about him is he always he he invests it with a lot of like um, humanness, you know, um, and so. Some characters like him, he had done that sort of stuff. But a lot, of, a lot of the actors hadn't done anything like this before. Um, in a way, what they brought to the experience, almost all of them, was a lot of experience on stage. So they were able to just sort of like be in the immediate, in the immediate moment as we were working, and sort of play things like it was all really happening in the immediate moment. It was pretty great. Another thing I would say, though, just because I'm realizing, is yes. for those characters who weren't used to the horror genre, you know, we basically shot in sequence. And so for the first two and a half, three weeks, it was like we were doing a drama that was unfolding. And everyone knew in the script where it was headed, but when we started doing that material for the kind of extended climax of the movie, it was like... It was terrifying for people, you know, and people were really emotional and because they had come to really be close with everyone playing, you know, sort of best friends over a long period of time. And so when the, when the shit really hits the fan, um, it was actually really emotional for, for everyone, including those characters who weren't, those actors who weren't used to sort of having to run and scream and do that kind of more typical thriller or horror movie stuff yeah and it, it really showed um, <laughs> yeah, it's just so good uh, thanks so something that I thought and maybe this is tough to address without giving too much away mm-hmm. but in your standard horror movie yeah there's no problem loathing the antagonists yeah yeah um, I think that's the that's the reason I needed to do this movie is I felt tremendous empathy for the antagonists. There were many periods at which I asked myself, are they the antagonists? (laughs) Um, In fact, is the antagonist my protagonist? Um, Because I felt like there was enough tension in those relationships to justify feeling like I wasn't completely sure of who was right or wrong or good or bad in this story. And so even now when I know sort of how the movie operates and how it all ends and, and sort of how, um, I guess traumatic you could say it becomes, I still really do believe that there's, um, something to those antagonists that make them very human and, and, and that I feel like, okay, I think they've just lost their way. And, um, I'm just, you know, who's to say that won't be me someday. 
you know, like I, I hope not, but I feel like that's sort of the strength of the movie in my mind or the interesting part of the storytelling is that no character felt entirely readable and um, entirely um, sort of like monolithically bad, you know. It was uh, it was a whole cast of there, but for the grace of God, go I. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. And that's the whole thing is I've had moments in my life where I've felt very vulnerable to just wanting an easy answer, wanting a system of thought that takes all the questions away and makes sort of my life really ordered. And um, I, I understand our desire for that kind of simplicity and, um, and our desire to be told what to do sometimes. Sometimes that's far preferable to having to like sort of um, blindly bat around in the dark, which is what a lot of us feel as, as human beings. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I think genre labels aside, I think human would be, to me, the, the best word to describe what I saw last Oh, night. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah, I always wanted it to feel like, uh, for, for better or for worse, a group of people... If, if I didn't say I could imagine myself among them, I could say I've met them some, somewhere, some, somehow along, along my life. And so that's, that was what was the challenge for me, was to make them relatable enough to enough people in the audience that you couldn't have an easy relationship with um, judging or, or criticizing or vilifying them. Will had all these opportunities to leave. Yeah. He did. He did. And, and um, I, you know, it's really funny because there were some people when we showed the movie in its early stages um, who were good friends, but they were just like, you know, I mean, I just know for myself, I would leave. I would leave. And I was just like, but would you? Would you leave? Like, isn't this part of polite society that you don't just sort of like get up and leave like a dinner party to which you received an invitation like a literal paper invitation and yeah and um you're seeing a bunch of people you haven't seen in a long time and in some ways this reunion is sort of for you would you really just get up and leave i mean that's that's a statement that's a social transgression and so part of what the movie is kind of exploring is um the, the downfall of too much politeness, you know, and, and part of, for Will, I mean, I get if people say like, I would have left and he should have left, I get it. And I agree to a degree, but I also think he's in such a kind of emotional paralysis that, you know, he can't quite find, he can't quite be anywhere, you know, he can't be at the party and he can't leave the party and he just feels so stuck. So, um, maybe I'm using that as a justification, but, um, but I agree. I mean, the point of it should be that you're fighting your own internal dialogue with him. Like, just get get out of there. Go. And everywhere he went, it got worse. Yes. <laughs> he, would, he would step outside for a breath of fresh air, and then you get the audience got to breathe. Right. And then something else happens Yes, to him, I know. Then he's back into the pressure cooker. Yes, yeah, no, it's true. It's true. But also then, I was hoping anyway that the audience might be asked to consider the possibility that the pressure cooker is his own mind. And so, um, because I've certainly been been in situations where it's like, you know, if I would just relax, this whole situation might be more relaxing. It may be my problem. Um, And so so that's kind of part of what was happening too, is the sense of sort of self-doubt that he's struggling with. Well, while there was use of flashback in this, I feel like it it did a good job of not showing everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was really important because you don't really know what happened in Will's past. Right. Caused this. You get a sense of, you get the general idea. Yeah. At the end, but throughout, I think it, you slowly piece it together, and I think that comes together with him uh, accepting this situation as well. Yes. It, I thought that was great. I think the way that you Thanks. approached that was really interesting. I think we had the. There probably was a moment where we we thought, do we need more flashbacks? But we didn't want this to be a movie where we kept flashing back to the past and if anything the the use of flashbacks was meant to be more kind of like a seamless sort of time travel you know um where it was sort of like he's always kind of toggling between these two worlds so it wasn't meant to feel it, there were t- i mean you know there were there were 
more times where it was meant to be more specifically kind of seamless. Um, With a light change or something. To yes, indicate. yes, exactly. Or just sort of like a camera revealing something and then coming back and you're like, oh wait, we're back in the present. I guess, or I guess I just saw the past. You know, like that kind of thing. Um, we didn't want it to feel like we did explain everything. And, and I went back and forth because I, there were times when I wondered, do people really need to understand exactly how his child died? And I was really heartened when we screened the movie to realize people didn't need that. I mean, they needed to understand, I think, that it was a terrible accident which is part of what makes it so sort of just like fucked up and upsetting is you can't assign blame. Um, it just happened. But, um, but other than that, I think, you know, we shied away from ever seeing anything graphic or, you know, it became very sort of purposefully fragmentary. Yeah, I think you get exactly what you need from what you showed. Oh, great. I'm psyched to hear that. And I mean, as an audience member, I, I mean, a lot of times flashback is, you know, akin to titles yes it's, it's true it's, it's true it's like, it's it's like a visual subtitle yeah and in this case I meant for it to be more like emotional building blocks because one thing that I talked a lot about with Logan um, who plays Will was this idea that you know he's really really a downer <laughs> um, he comes to the party in a pretty bad mood and he stays pretty relentlessly sour through and it just gets worse over the course of the night and so in a way those quote flashbacks that was more just like visual language that helped us understand he's not and he wasn't always like that you know there was a time when he like smiled and he was a freer lighter person and so I just wanted to have a little bit of a, a way in to seeing that of him and I felt like if I could just make it feel kind of seamless maybe that would work I don't know if it did. Oh, really did. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to hear it. Joanna, give us the the cutoff. Okay. So so we can expect to see the release sometime in the next year? Yes, exactly. Um, Draft House, I think, is shooting for early next year. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. I I love a lot of the films that Draft House has released. I wish there was some way I could see Roar. Oh, man. Oh, I know.